Good morning, family. I'm Dakari Middlebrooks, Creative Director here at Mount Zion Baptist Church, and I'm so excited to welcome you to our services. If this is your first time, we welcome you. If you're a returning friend, we celebrate you. And if you're a member, we honor you. Listen, you're in for a treat because today we honor God's presence through baptisms and communion. But not only that, come closer. We're starting a brand new series called Relationship Rules. Yes, everyone loves the topic of relationships, personal, family, or intimate. Ladies and gentlemen, we love a good relationship story. And Bishop is excited to bring this word. So hit the like and share button, invite a friend, and come and worship with us. God is in this space. He's in this building, and we're excited to welcome you here. Let's worship God together. Well, family, sing unto the Lord a new song. Anybody know he's done marvelous things? We have a new song for you today. Woo. Let the heavens rejoice. And let the earth be glad. Our God reigns. Sovereign God, sovereign King, I trust in you. I trust in you. Sovereign King, Sovereign King, I trust in you, I trust in you. Sovereign God, Sovereign God, Sovereign God. Sovereign God. Sovereign God. Sovereign God. said I trust you, we trust in you. Sovereign God, said I put my trust in you.
right where you are. He's in control. Everybody lift your voice. He's in control. Right where you are, if you believe. He really has the whole world in his hands and he's in control. Come on, just lift that up and declare that right where you are. Oh God. Lift your voice and say, he's in control. trust you. So God, we trust you. Because if you did it before, you will do it again. You are way maker. You are miracle worker. I need a believer that know that he's in control, that he's a sovereign God, that he's a powerful God. Just to lift up your hands and declare, Lord, I trust you. Woo! Lord, I trust you. I'll stand on your word. If you made a way before, you would do it again. Come on and lift up your voice. Right where you are and declare it. God, if you healed my body, you would do it again. God, if you delivered me out of a situation, you would do it again. And so, God, I know your word declares that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. And for the Lord, God, we declare today. We will not walk in fear. You are in control. I need a praise to lift up your voice and just trust them. Trust them today. Trust them today. Trust them with your life. Trust them with your children. Trust them with your health. Trust them today. Trust them today. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus and just take them at his word. Somebody stand on the promise of God. To lift your voice right where you are and declare it. Fue make miracle work. Keep light in the darkness. We know. Anybody know who he is? Who you are. One more time. Raise your voice as loud as you can and declare it. Fue make miracle work.
your worship to him. Lift up your worship to him. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. I don't know who needs to hear that today, but he's a promise keeper. Woo. I'll just say that one more time to encourage you. He's a promise keeper. Lord, we thank you. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in today to the Mount Zion Church right here in Nashville, Tennessee. So grateful. I'm Bishop Joseph Walt Walker III. So grateful for you. Let me tell you something. This month, February, we say Happy Black History Month. And we're excited about all that God is going to do in your life. And, you know, I believe this is going to be a powerful service. People have just been talking about, man, this series. I'm excited to get into your relationship rules. It's going to be amazing. So, we're going to have communion today. You're going to see some amazing uh, baptisms, a lot of things that are going to take place. We're just excited about what God is going to do. So know that I am so excited about you being tuned in. Now, I want to pray for you now. Let's come into agreement. Let's center ourselves on all that God wants to do in our lives. Father, thank you for this wonderful opportunity now. We thank you right now, God, that your word is going to meet us right where we are. And Father, we thank you that those who are headed on the stream, those who are on the stream, we pray that the power of your anointing goes through and ministers to them in a special way. We thank you for breakthroughs, for healing, for deliverance, for provision. We just thank you for it all. So do only what you can do in Jesus' name. It is so. Amen. Listen, thank God for each one of you. I want you to follow me. Joseph Walker 3, follow my wife and Dr. Steph Walker. We love to be connected to you. We are so excited about that opportunity to connect with you. Also, we certainly want you to know Mount Zion is celebrating Black History Month and all the amazing, extraordinary accomplishments of African Americans in the United States. We're certainly celebrating that, of course. Our prayers, and certainly we thank God for the legacy. Just a few days ago, I was losing, losing Cicely Tyson, uh, you know, a legend in our country, a legend in the world. And uh, we thank God for her life and her legacy. Listen, I want you to know uh, many of you who want to know how to engage our ministry, how to connect. We have a thing called the Ministry Hub now. And I want you to go into the Ministry Hub and all those great announcements, all those great ways to connect are right there on the website. So make certain you take advantage because you may not hear me talking about a lot of announcements going forward but they'll be on the ministry hub. Go there. It's a place for engagement. It's a place to find out what's going on. I promise you, it will be a blessing to your life. Do you have my new book? Do you? It's called Leadership and Loneliness. I want you to get a copy. I promise you, it'll bless your life. I want to thank God for all of you that have gotten your copy. So many of you already told me how you're being blessed by it. It is the most transparent book I've ever, ever, ever written. So I want you to get a copy of it. I promise you to bless you. Now, this Wednesday Bible study, this series, now listen, I hope you were blessed on this past Wednesday. We started out talking about the overcoming the spirit of offense when you're being offended. We're going to talk this week about moving from a victim to a victor. I want to help you get out that victim mentality. I promise you it's going to bless you. Now, I do also want all of our ministers, uh, all of our elders of our church. Now, if you're a minister or elder, this is important. Even if you're new to our ministry, we have a ministry alliance meeting once a month. It's my time to pour into you. So please remember, it's going to happen this month only on Saturday, February 13th. It's going to happen at 1 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We're not, we normally do it on the second Sunday at 5 o'clock, but second Sunday is Valentine's Day. So I won't do you like that. And I feel like, you know, I know today is Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I know that, and we're celebrating Super Bowl Sunday, so the Super Bowl will be behind us, and you know what? You'll be able to focus in on ministerial lives. So I want you to do that. Let's make sure that you're there on Saturday. 
uh, Saturday in the Zoom link. You can contact uh, Elder Alex Atkinson for more information, or you can reach our office. If you don't know how to contact him, just call our church office. They'll get, to that, get you that information. We thank God for you. We're going to prepare our hearts right now. First Sunday of February, guys. Let's do it right. We're starting this year off, man. Woo! Smoking. Doing it God's way. Coming out of fast, we ain't playing. Like I told you last Sunday, we're eagles. We're not playing out here. We're trying to get to the next level. And so as a result, our tithe matters. Our tithe matters. Our tithe matters. So what I want you to do, I want you to prepare your gift. I want you to prepare it now. Trust in God. Say, Lord, I'm going to give my tithe to you. I'm going to sow into good ground my offering. I want to thank you for being able to be connected to a church that has great vision. I want to thank God for all of you giving around the world right now. Look, you can text to give. Text right now. That's the information right there. Just text to give. You can also mail it in to the Mount Zion Church, Care Finance Department, 7594, Old Hickory Boulevard, Whites Creek, Tennessee, 37189. Get ready. God's got a blessing for your life. Listen, while you're giving, I want you to know something. I'm going to pray. And after I pray, I'm going to hear a few announcements. Our ministry, ministry of music is going to bless you. And I have a word. When I tell you, I got a word for you, I want you to get ready. Now get your Bibles together. Get centered. Judges 14. That's where we're going. So, Father, thank you for the privilege we have to give now. I pray blessings be upon every household, every family. And we thank you that it's already done. In Jesus' name. Start. Based on the profession of your faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Chris Kendall, upon the profession of your faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Xavier Kendall, upon the profession of your faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Deshaun Elliott, upon the profession of your faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Monacia Elliott, upon the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. James White, upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Deidre Rhodes, upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> hey everybody, it's time for church. Praise and worship is electric, and the Word is enlightening. Wow, service was awesome, but maybe you wish you could recall the start time of an event or how to get involved with church initiatives. No problem. Check out this awesome new resource for Mount Zion members called My Mount Zion. There, you can find answers to many common questions. From the mountzionnashville.org website, click the My Mount Zion button in the top right corner or click the My Mount Zion button located on the Connect tab of the Mount Zion app. Welcome to My Mount Zion. From My Mount Zion, you can view the church calendar of events, learn of meeting opportunities, and register for events. View and update details related to you and family members in your household. Serve together in ministry by joining a ministry group. And more. Now everyone is better connected. HBCUs have always and will continue to stand tall as learning institutions for higher education.
These schools are equipping students of color to thrive in nearly every industry. Mount Zion is committed to ensuring that HBCU students are able to attend school without extreme financial burden. That's why we've extended our partnership with Thrivent. For every $2 you donate, Thrivent will donate $1. Any gift, large or small, will enable a student to obtain a quality education. Students of color are counting on people like you to help them create a better tomorrow. Visit www.mtzionnashville.org to donate today. Mount Zion Get Ready for Wednesdays in February. In life, we will all experience hurt, doubt, even loss, but that shouldn't hinder us from living the abundant life God has called us to. Tune in each Wednesday at 12 noon or 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Mount Zion Facebook page or download the Mount Zion app from your App Store or Google Play for this incredible Bible study series, Hurt But Not Hindered, a new teaching series from Bishop Joseph Walker. You'll be glad you did. Our text to give procedures have been enhanced too. Sending a text to 267 MTZ Seed will send an actual text message of your gift. First, start a new text message, sending it to 267 MTZ Seed. That's 267 689 7333. Then, type your giving keyword along with the amount. For example, to tie $20, type Tithes 20 in the message box. Available giving keywords are Tithes, Offering, Vision, TV Partner, and Other. That's it. Giving is more simple and easy to manage. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. 
caution people from getting married to save themselves from themselves. The fact is, is that whoever you are and whatever you are and whatever you have not reconciled in your individual life will only complicate and frustrate and in some areas and in some cases eliminate the marriage relationship. This message is going to be different. I'm just going to lay it out there. It's going to be different. It's, it's a message that's going to address the importance of our decisions. And you're going to discover today that if you are to achieve the things that God has for your life, it's going to require the discipline to leave some things alone. No matter how appealing, no matter how alluring, no matter how emotionally tied you are to that thing, there comes a moment you're going to have to make some concrete decisions. I've got to leave this thing alone. Even as I preach this, God is speaking to you now, revealing to you some things in your spirit. You know what that thing is. You, you know. I don't have to call it out. You already know. You're thinking about it in your mind. You know that thing that keeps holding you back, that thing that you just can't seem to let go of that thing that you keep creeping to go to, I've come to announce that there is deliverance in this house for you today. There's a breakthrough in this house for you today. And I want to be real. I want to be 100. There are just some things you're going to have to leave alone. And today, I'm talking about that honey you're going to have to leave that honey alone. Now, let me help you understand something. This is the story of, of Samson. And it is an interesting text because we see a man with great destiny upon his life, not truly to the point of maturation yet, but it is evolving. God has plans for Samson. Those plans involve Samson's victories, and ultimately, it is about Israel. It is about how God would use Samson for the benefit of his people. And anytime God is going to use somebody like you, you have to know that the enemy is plotting and scheming ways to prevent it. I want you to understand this story as I've read it to you because it is a story about Samson's fascination with the woman of the Philistines. And he wants her, but on his way to meet her and come back from her, he sees a lion he has killed. We'll talk about that. And he's already killed this lion, but the carcass now has honey that is attractive to him. And he takes the honey, gives it to his parents, and they eat it. Now, I want you to understand something. Listen, like, like Samson, your destiny has been providentially orchestrated. N now, what's important in the story to know is that Samson was a man of strength and destiny was on his life. And when there is destiny upon your life, you have to understand something, that the enemy has all of these ways in which he tries to sabotage you. But even though God is at work in your life, it's going to be a struggle in the desires of the flesh. That's typically how it works for most of us. God is pulling us in one direction, and our insatiable desires are pulling us in another. Nevertheless, God can use us in spite of us. And we're going to see this because God's going to ultimately get the glory. But in order to appreciate Samson, you have to have an understanding of the events surrounding his birth. See, Samson is born in a strenuous situation. It is a fact that Samson is born in a time of great public strain among his people and the Philistine people. The Philistines were arch enemies of Judah. They, as a matter of fact, they were known as sea people. They occupied the coastal plains. They dominated them. They, they had superior arms and military organization. They had a monopoly on smiting or smithing iron. They, they occupied the borders, Palestine, they, and they came into conflict with Judah on every hand. They dominated Judah. They were a nemesis to God's people. But Samson 
would be enlisted to deliver the people from the Philistines. Now, they had been against them for some time, and it put a strain on the relationship. And this is the environment that Samson is born into. It's no small thing. In the midst of this environment of unpredictable social climate, Samson is born and his people are still alive. Make no mistake about it. You being alive, considering the climate of things you've had to come through, is no small thing. And you ought to take a moment and just give God glory, considering all the factors and variables that were against you, that you are still alive. You ought to be giving God glory through all the things you've had to experience, that you are still alive. Never forget that. Never forget that there is something special at work in your life. It is a fact that Romans 8, 28 says, and we know all things work together for good, for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. So God is up to something. God is up to something. But wait a minute. He's up to something in Samson's life, but Samson may not be privy to it, just like you may not be privy to the totality of what God is up to. But it doesn't mean that God is not moving. So you don't come through what you've come through for naught. There is something special in your future. And, and what you're going to understand, like Samson, is that God has the ability, watch this, to allow you to move in spaces you never would have imagined. But you've got to get the revelation. Because, you know, what Isaiah says, and I love it, and Isaiah chapter 49 declares that God will do a new thing, will you not know it? You see, what you have to see here is that there are a divine, or there is a divine plan and operation. See, what the text shares with us, and I want you to get this, here it is, is that Samson sees a woman from Timnah. Now, <laughs> Samson has this problem that he always likes women over there. How do you end up liking women from the enemy's camp? Well, on the surface, it doesn't make sense. Why would he be drawn to the oppressor? Well, God has a plan for it. You see, when God's plan is in operation, God controls the setting of your sight. He saw her and was immediately attracted to her. And the deeper understanding is that God would use Samson's human proclivities for spiritual purposes. His attraction to what was socially forbidden would be turned into a divine plan to bring God's purposes to pass for his people. God uses our foolishness for his glory. It's here you got to appreciate that even though it appears strange, it is a spiritual setup, that God can use this as a setup. My God, I feel this. His parents are greatly concerned about the attraction to the Philistine woman. Samson wants to marry her, and his parents are attempting to prevent it. But the scripture says they did not know that God was using this moment to give them victory over their enemies. God was weaving through it. God is setting the stage for the greatest victory they've ever had. You see, in more than it's more than a personal desire for Samson. It is the answer to the prayers of God's people. You never know how God is going to help you get the breakthrough. You never know how God's going to use you to position you in the earth to manifest his glory. This is why you got to remember how to be faithful and how to be focused. I need to be faithful enough to hold fast to what's in my spirit. And I got to be focused away from all the distractions so that I don't allow anybody's opinion to rob me of what God is doing in my life. Now, whenever you're doing something like that, you're going to have to deal with persistent opposition. What happens in the text is where I want to drop anchor today. People of God, what happened to Samson is what's going to happen to you and I. You will always be confronted with demonic opposition. This is what comes with the territory. So stop acting strange. Stop thinking it's, you know, 
Why you? You're not the only one. It happens to everybody. And one of the things you're going to have to deal with after you've experienced a great high is an attack that brings you low. Samson goes to Timnah. He meets with the girl. I mean, it's an amazing thing. And what's interesting, on his way, watch this, the Bible says, out of nowhere, on his way to Timnah, the Bible says that he experiences an attack from a lion. Imagine this. He's on his way with a great high. I'm going to meet her. And on his way, he has to experience an attack from a lion? It's a satanic struggle. The attack represents the attack of the enemy to destroy you before you walk in the promise of God. Always know, before you walk into what God has for your life, the enemy will always attempt to destroy you. The enemy wants to pounce on you on the path of destiny. And listen carefully. The Bible says that a lion attacked him. Have you, think, have you thought about that for a second? Think about it. A lion attacked him. Scripture talks about that. Your adversary is like a roaring lion seeking, right? You know, he wants to basically destroy you. But think about this for a second. There are three things about a lion I want you to remember. It's the same thing about your enemy. He's a stalker. How long did the lion see Samson before Samson saw the lion? Do you know that the enemy is stalking you? The enemy is strategically just waiting for the right moment of vulnerability to pounce on you. You got some stalkers in your life. You got some things that are stalking you. You got people that are just strategizing, trying to figure out how they can come and disrupt the destiny on your life. But wait a minute. It always attacks suddenly. Notice, when the attack comes, it comes out of nowhere, and it's a sudden attack. It's not, it doesn't give you a chance to prepare for it. It's a sudden attack. Some of you right now, that's how the attack came in your life, out of nowhere. You were minding your own business, and out of nowhere, one phone call, one turn around the corner, one situation, where did this come from? Some of you right now are, are, are trying to deal with that in your life, and the Lord, how in the world was I on this high, and all of a sudden now, I've been brought in this low place because of a sudden attack? and it has incredible strength. Lions have strength. This isn't some small cat. This is a lion, the king of the jungle. When you look back over your life, you can identify a season where you've experienced lions in your life. Struggle is real. <laughs> Struggle is real, y'all. And Samson has to realize something. If I'm going to deal with this lion, I need supernatural strength. The Bible says that Samson overcame the lion with his bare hand, that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. You are never going to defeat the lions in your life on your strength. You need supernatural strength. When you're caught off guard, when you're dealing with this kind of strength of the enemy, I don't care how much natural power you have, how much willpower you think you have, you got to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit because only the Holy Spirit will give you victory in this area and you can't beat yourself up trying to do it by yourself. Some of you right now are beating yourself up saying, I don't understand why I can't get the victory. You just got to come to the realization it's not by your strength. It's by the strength of God. You got to get to a place and say, Lord, it's too big for me. I need your power. I need your anointing. I need your strength. Let me tell you something, and I want to declare for your life that the lion of low self-esteem, the lion, the lion of an abusive relationship, all the lions of addiction in your life are about to be defeated because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but we wrestle against powers, principalities, and spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm not going to roll over and let a lion take me out. I got the power of the Holy Spirit, and God told me to tell somebody, look at me, don't you let that lion have your destiny. Don't you let that strong thing take your life from you. You have greater in you, and greater that is in you than he that is in the world. Let me tell you something, child of God. Listen to me. Your decisions produce your outcomes. Here it is. 
Here, I'm going to leave it all on the table right now. I'm going to leave it all on the table. With all the amazing things we've seen at work in the life of Samson, in spite of them, we now have to get to the root of the matter. I open up talking about the power of decisions because our decision is a reflection of our character. This is why you should ask God for wisdom as you go down the path of greatness because poor decisions will contribute to your demise. The enemy would love nothing more than to see you self-sabotage your destiny. It's here. We see it playing out in real time. Samson kills the lion, and when he is on his way back, the scripture says, and some time later. I want you to see this. Samson's on his way to Timnah. A lion comes through the power of the Spirit of God. He kills the lion, and then the scripture says, he goes and had a great time with the woman from Timnah, and he's on his way back some time later. And the very lion that he had killed, he now sees a carcass filled with honey and bees are swarming. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. <laughs> and he's drawn back to the past. He sees a carcass of a lion and he's drawn to the honey that's in the carcass. This is the seduction of sweetness. This is what gets many of us. We should be moving forward in our life, but we get caught up in the attraction of what was. He's already killed a lion. Now he's about to breach his Nazarite vows. He's in Leviticus chapter 11. It states that it is ritually impure to go and touch that which is dead. The thing that tried to kill him now looks attractive. Why do we keep going after that which is dead? How is it that you allow the sweetness of the honey to cause you to have amnesia? The sweetness of the honey can blind you of the deadness of the situation. Preach, Bishop. I'm doing the best I can. This is why I'm preaching this message because somebody can't get ahead because you just can't leave that honey alone. No matter how appealing it is, remember, you have to understand that is in your past. It's something you got the victory over and moved on, and yet you are still being enticed by what happened yesterday. Remember something. What makes it appealing is that it tries to capitalize on your senses. The enemy always tries to get you to focus on what looks good in a bad situation. It's a carcass. It's dead. But the enemy wants you to see the honey. It doesn't want you to see the dead carcass. It wants you to see the honey. It wants you to see what it's driving. But you forget it's a dead situation. It wants you to see its pictures on Instagram. But you forget it's still a dead situation. It wants you to see how much money they're paying you but it's still a dead, no-end job. You have to be mindful that the enemy is playing with your senses. Listen, it's tied to a previous season. As a child of God, you got to know when seasons are over. You've been there, done that. You got the scars to prove it. You fought the lion. I'm sure when he fought the lion, he got some scars and wounds, but he defeated the lion. You got stuff you overcame, and you cried about it. You got wounds over it. You got scars to prove it. You got trophies talking about, look at what I overcame, and you testified to it. Why are you going to go back to a season that God gave you the victory over? 
Forget those things which are behind and reach to those things which are before. But then, maybe you ought to remember this. It's going to make you sick. I don't care how sweet that honey is. That honey is contaminated because it's tied to something that's a carcass that's dead. And I don't care. I need you to hear. I don't care how sweet it may feel to you. I don't care how beautiful it may look to you. It's going to make you sick. It's going to make your family sick. And if you notice what happens, it's the same thing that happened in the garden. When Eve took the apple, she gave it to her husband. You see, what the enemy is trying to do is not just trying to make you sick. He's trying to make your family sick. He's trying to make generations sick because Samson ate the honey on the way and took it and gave it to his parents. How is it that we take the things and we don't realize that these things are going to affect our children? They're going to affect our cousins. They're going to affect our entire bloodline. You got to stop making people sick. Today, I want you to understand, I want to make an announcement. I want to help somebody today. I told you, it's a different kind of message. I need you today to separate from the situation. How many people do you know who have not been able to move forward because they can't leave the honey alone? I've come to tell you that this is the season. You got to separate from the situation. I want you to hear me. Whatever it is, my destiny is too great. My family is too great. My career is too great. My future is too important to be caught up in some honey. When I was a child, I thought as a child. I understood as a child. I acted as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and doth he meditate day and night. Look at me. I got a word for you. You're on your way to deal with that honey. I know. You got a text, and you wonder, what should I do? It looks so sweet. I tell you what to do. I know, I know what you're saying. But Bishop, it, it, it's been so good to me. Just, can I get one more time? Bishop, I, I'm lonely and you know, this is love month and can, can I just go out with them? Can, just this one day they ain't gonna. I'm trying to help you understand something. But I know the plans I think towards you thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. <laughs> you are fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> you are the head and not the tail. You are blessed going in and blessed coming out. Don't you know who you are? Nay, in all things, you are more than a conqueror. So today, when it comes to the honey, we say, stop. When it comes to my destiny, and nothing gonna hold me back because I'm moving into what God has for my life. I ain't going back, y'all. I ain't going back. I am not leave that honey alone. Go right in your phone right now. Delete, delete, delete. Your destiny is too important. That thing you've been doing, that crazy behavior, hanging out with the wrong crowd, leave that honey alone. Child of God, I'm telling you now, this is the moment. You got to declare, I am going forward. Lift your hands right where you are. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Listen, listen to Clarence. I've been changed. <laughs> Woo! Healed. Yes.
Yes, Lord Jesus. Set free. Huh. Thank you, Lord. Deliver. My God, I found joy. Found grace, favor. Say right now is the moment. Today is the day. I've been changed. Yes, Lord. going back and God had you to hear this message today to begin this series because it matters it matters our decisions determine our destiny now you need a relationship you need a church home it's time to make that that important decision do it right now salvation at mtzionashville.org do it right now salvation at mtzionnashville.org. I want to hear from you right now. I want to hear from you. I want you to make that decision because you got to make that declaration. I don't care how sweet, how wonderful it looks. I got to leave that honey alone. Make that decision now. Trust Jesus with your life right now. My God. share now in, <laughs> in Holy Communion. And the reason we know we're not going back because we know the price that Jesus paid for us. Every first Sunday, we share as a family in communion while you're at home. Your crackers and juice were here. And boy, I tell you, I miss y'all so much. I do. Oh, I miss you so much, but I'm thankful that we can share as a family still Holy Communion, and today we're thankful for Calvary and the blood of Jesus Christ. I'll never forget what that means. I want you to take a moment and just focus as we prepare to commune together. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you. What keeps me out of honey is the power of my relationship with Jesus Christ, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Just take a moment. Let's commune in his presence right now. 
just commune in his presence right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. sins and my iniquity and I Okay. 
Easter supper, the night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body which is broken for you, taking all of this in remembrance of me. When he gave thanks, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the New Testament chair for the remission of your sins. So often as you drink this cup, you show forth the Lord's death until he come again. Drink ye all of this in remembrance of me. Wow. I thank God for the blood, don't you? I thank God for this service today. Share this service with someone you know who needs to hear it. Be a digital disciple. Share, share, share. And make sure you follow up with me on Instagram at Joseph Walker 3. Let me know where you were watching from. Let me know how this message blessed you. And listen, we got a whole declaration this week. We leaving that honey alone. That ought to be your response. But folks mess with you, you know what? <laughs> I'm leaving that honey alone. My destiny is too great. I thank God for you. May the grace of God go with you. May he cover you. May he keep you. And may he make his face shine upon you. Until we meet again, you'll be blessed. And know we're praying for you. And we love you. God bless you.